Hello everyone welcome. Today, we're going to clarify all the details about Yuzu, from its downfall to its successors, and also address the backstage dispute between Suyu and Sadachi. This will be a comprehensive summary of all the events, for those who missed any videos or are just joining us and want to understand the story succinctly. It all began with the lawsuit filed by Nintendo against Yuzu, alleging that the emulator was causing damage to the company and even leaking major titles, such as Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. However, many argued that this lawsuit would be just a waste of Nintendo's resources, as it would be difficult to prove the accusations. This lawsuit actually represented an opportunity to legally clarify what is allowed in the emulation scene and what is considered illegal. However, the outcome was more tragic than expected. Nintendo, with its virtually infinite resources, could prolong the lawsuit for years, making it financially unsustainable for the user team. Hiring lawyers and covering the costs throughout this period would be extremely expensive, and the resources obtained through Patreon and community donations would not be enough to cover these expenses. Faced with this scenario, the Yuzu team chose to reach a settlement to end the lawsuit once and for all. The company behind Yuzu, Tropic Haze, was forced to suspend its operations immediately. Additionally, they agreed to pay Nintendo a compensation of approximately $2.4 million. With Nintendo's victory, the name Yuzu now belonged to the company, along with its website and Discord community. All servers that allowed online gaming, hosted by the Yuzu and Citra teams, were immediately discontinued, preventing local network play. Additionally, Citra also had to cease its development, as Nintendo's lawsuit prevented the person responsible for Yuzu from being involved in any other emulation project. And since Yuzu and Citra are developed practically by the same team, this affected both projects. These losses represent significant setbacks. The 3DS is an iconic console, one of the best selling of all time, with a large fan base and an impressive game library. Similarly, the Switch, which will likely become the best-selling console by the end of its life cycle, also has an extensive library, with heavyweight games and incredible franchises. These losses represent a threat to game preservation, as games are increasingly recognized as an important part of culture and history. Furthermore, Nintendo's oppression in the emulation scene has led some developers of Ryujinx to abandon the project. Additionally, Drastic DS, the best Nintendo DS emulator for Android, which used to be paid, is now free, but the developer plans to remove the app from the Play Store at any time. Other smaller projects related to Game Boy have also been abandoned, leaving the emulation scene in a chaotic state. However, open source emulators are like a Hydra. If one head is cut off, others emerge in its place. Many people backed up the Yuzu and Citra repositories and began sharing them, leading to the emergence of new teams interested in continuing development. Thus, Nuzu and Suyu were born. Nuzu, led by a 15-year-old, ended up being abandoned, but Suyu continued to advance with a promising project, despite the controversies we'll discuss later. You might be wondering, what prevents Nintendo from taking down another Switch emulator? The Suyu team has the answer. Yuzu fell because it used dump keys from a real Switch to decrypt games. Suyu plans to develop an emulator where keys are not necessary, but games would need to be decrypted beforehand. This method is already used to run games on Citra where games are decrypted before use, making the process easier and reducing dependence on external keys. Suyu has already started distributing its builds, but without implementing the function that discards the prod.keys, so there is nothing preventing Nintendo from taking down Suyu at the moment. A curious situation occurred when Suyu decided to post its fork on GitLab and a troll sent a DMCA, with spelling errors and little sense, taking down the project's fork. Initially, it was suspected that Nintendo was behind this, but it was soon revealed to be just a troll DMCA. The Suyu team then decided to host the project on its own server. If you're enjoying the content so far, don't forget to leave your like so I know it's worth producing videos with more elaborate scripts. If this is your first time on the channel, consider subscribing to stay updated on all the latest news. Now let's move on to the part of this video where things are rebuilt. First, a new successor to Yuzu emerges, Sadachi developed by an experienced programmer who had already ported Yuzu to the iPhone in just one day. He is also involved in other active emulation projects, which has excited many people. Additionally, substitutes for Citra began to emerge, such as Lime 3DS and Lemonade, the latter starting to study the code to compile a version of Citra. The Lime team also announced interest in developing an emulator for the Nintendo Switch, initially called Lime NX. In the early days, the Suyu team managed to develop the home menu, a feature that was practically ready in Yuzu. Just 11 days after Yuzu's downfall, 
We already had versions of Suyu and Sadachi running smoothly on Windows. However, Sadachi already showed significant improvements in RAM usage, although it still had problems running some games. However, not everything was smooth sailing. On the release of Princess Peach's game, either Yuzu nor Suyu could run the game. The experienced developer of Sadachi quickly released a fix for his project, but the Suyu team copied the code without giving proper credit, generating controversy. This raised doubts about the project's evolution capability and moral integrity. It's worth noting that the Yuzu team also copied many fixes implemented first in Ryujinx, another Switch emulator. Although the practice is common, when a novice team like Suyu does the same, it can generate criticism about its ethics and commitment to the emulation community. This incident sparked the so-called emu drama, but after much discussion, even the Sadachi developer spoke out, stating that he had no problem with the situation. In the end, a credit line was added to give proper recognition to the fix. This concludes the story so far of the evolution of emulators for the Switch, but it's only the beginning for the emulators that will replace Citra. So, we have two projects to replace Citra. The first one released is Lemonade. Right off the bat, Lemonade brings many new features and optimizations. It combines two versions of Citra for Android the official version from the website and Citra MMJ, designed for less powerful devices. As a result, it's already capable of running Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon at 60 FPS, almost double the previous performance of Citra. Although it still can't load some titles, Lemonade seems to be the most promising project so far. Alongside Lemonade, the Lime project resurfaced, which I personally thought had been abandoned. In its two versions, Lime has only undergone a rebranding, but tests conducted on this channel clearly show a significant RAM savings provided by this project. Therefore, I believe it will become a promising project soon. Both Lime and Lemonade, as derivatives of Citra, already have versions for Android, although I haven't had the opportunity to test them personally yet. I will do so soon. And that's what we have so far. Leave a comment if you like this type of summary, so I can evaluate whether I should make more videos like this. Thank you for your viewership, and until the next video.